Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark, Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right. Hey guys, it's Mark Itel here and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And man, oh man, we are so excited to be with you this week. We've got an awesome, awesome show lined up for you. We are going to tackle that 800 pound gorilla, the NAR lawsuit verdict that was dropped this week. Uh, I don't know if it was ironic or not that that came out on Halloween. Oh boy, it was a trick and not a treat for the Realtors Association. And I know it's far from over in the implications of how we do business are yet to be determined and it's likely to be appealed but man oh man what a stake in the ground Uh, that was super super interesting we're going to talk about the uh, federal reserves decision uh, regarding leaving interest rates for the time being where they are and i am always so fascinated by how the reporters and the economists dissect the words in the press conference or in the report you know he changed if to when and this to that and x to y and because of that we think there is a future wait oh and wait a minute no there's not a future rate hike i don't know how many of you are old enough to remember alan greenspan as the federal reserve chair and they would predict his moves based on which briefcase he carried to the meeting. I mean, the things that we use as a gauge or an indicator, it's just, it's fascinating to me. So you might as well just pull out a Ouija board, right? And, uh, or, or roll the dice or the chicken bones if you believe in voodoo, just crazy craziness. But we're gonna talk about all that where are rates now what's it doing to the housing market we are going to answer all your questions guys if you have questions or comments and you want them on the air just call or text 855-462-7292 that's 855-462-7292 that is the anytime hotline and jen is the other half of the we and she is back there womaning the anytime hotline she'll get your questions on the air for you or if you prefer just head over to mr mortgage radio.com that's mr mortgage radio.com right in the middle of the page there's a big orange button that says get your questions on the air click that button type your question in it'll pop right up on the screen in front of jen and she will read it on the air for you can you believe this is the first week of november man where has the time gone and i walked into the home improvement store and everything's christmas overnight halloween boom gone like the ghost or the pumpkin uh, the magic fairy gone now what happened to thanksgiving we're already on to christmas and who out there is ready for mariah carey and that relentless repeat of her Christmas Carol. My God, that song gets right under my skin about the third time I hear it, and we're about to hear it for six weeks. But hey, I wanna be the very first person on the radio this holiday season to sing you a Christmas Carol, all right? Bear with me, guys. I wrote this in jest in anticipation of all of the controversy around this week. So to the tune of Jingle Bells, here we go. Dashing from the bank with our approval in our hands, through the listings we go to find a piece of dreamland, houses big and small, in neighborhoods so bright, Oh, what fun it is to search for our dream home tonight. Oh, mortgage rates, mortgage rates going up each day. Oh, what fun it is to see our savings fade away. Hey, mortgage rates, mortgage rates climbing to the sky. Oh, what fun it is to buy while rates are just too high. Hey. (laughs) All right, guys, Jen has thrown her headphones down and walked out of the booth. I'm sorry, come back, come back. I couldn't resist. I just want to put a little levity in the air because man, oh man, it's all doom and gloom news out there, right? What does the NAR lawsuit mean for the cost of representation? Are commissions going down? Are they going up if you're a buyer? What's it gonna do to housing values? I mean, interest rates have stabilized a bit this week, so that part's encouraging. I just want everybody to exhale, We're here if you have questions. And the reality is housing is not an option. Unless you're living under the bridge or in your mom's basement, 
you're paying rent or you're paying a mortgage and people ask all the time, is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? It is if you have to. If you need to move because of a job or you're downsizing or you're upsizing or you're right sizing or whatever the lingo of the day is, guys, housing's not optional. Think about it this way. If you're, hey, we're in the holiday season. I just sang you a Christmas carol. If you're going to jump in the car and drive 12 hours and go home for the holidays this year and you've got the windows down and that, hey, maybe that Mariah Carey song is blasting out of the dash and you're singing along with it and the weather's great and you look at the gps you're ahead of schedule the sky is blue that crisp seasonal air is coming through the window you're on top of the world and you go over the overpass come down the other side brake lights as far as you can see there's a tractor trailer that jackknife turned over fuel spilt on the highway the road's closed you're never going to get through what happens your GPS reroutes you, yet yeah, you might be late. It might be super frustrating. Now you're driving through busy downtown traffic. You're off the highway. You've been rerouted, but guess what? You're still headed home for the holidays. Your destination, your goals have not changed. The path that you're taking might have become more frustrating, might have become a little more difficult, but you are still on your journey. You're still on the path to home for the holidays. And I want to encourage everybody out there today, stay on your path because if you're one of the lucky ones who made all the right decisions and you're sitting at home with a ton of equity and a super low interest rate, congratulations guys, that is awesome. But share your journey and the value of equity and home ownership with the people that you influence, with the young folks, because they're throwing in the towel. They're getting super frustrated. And equity changes lives, guys. That's why I get so excited about this. My job's pretty boring, but when I'm not behind the mic, it's all math all day. But the interesting thing is, if you make the decision to swallow your expectations, we talked about it last week, maybe the first time buyer needs to take a few things off the wish list and buy what you can afford. Not what you qualified for. You heard me say that. Not what you're qualified for. What you can comfortably afford each month. And yeah, maybe it's only a two bedroom, one bath with a carport instead of a three, two with a garage and a pool. But make that decision, buy that house, and over time you're going to build up equity. And that equity is going to allow you to move up. And that equity in the second home is going to allow you to move up or down or laterally or pull some equity out and pay for the kid's school or buy an investment property. Whatever the case is, it all starts with equity. So I just want to encourage you, if you've already accomplished all of that, man, congratulations. That's awesome. But reach down and help somebody up with the information that you can share. Because the reality is when interest rates were in the double digits, people successfully bought and sold and built equity. So it's not specific to interest rate. It's not specific to the economic cycle that we're in. Over time, you're going to build equity and housing is not an option. And there's not much out there for free housing. And if you qualify for free housing, you've got a whole new set of challenges. Man, I feel for you. But if you're paying rent, and that rent equivalent could pay for a mortgage, that might be the better decision. So guys, that's all I have to say. I don't mean to get on the soapbox. I did want to sing a little bit for you. Uh, <laughs> I am in the festive holiday spirit, and I wanted to beat Mariah Carey to the airwaves with my very, very own and unique original Christmas carol. All right, guys, you hear the music, you know what that means. That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Maybe I'll sing my way out of this one. Mortgage rates, mortgage rates, going up so high. <laughs> I'm kidding. Guys, sit tight on the other side of this very, very short commercial break. We'll be back with more of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you know any friends, family, coworkers, or the guy in front of you at the grocery line who's talking or thinking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to help me spread the word, introduce them to me, to the team. You can do that by simply sharing MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Guys, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials.
Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and this is the Mr. Mortgage Show. Guys, comments or questions, and no more comments are necessary regarding my singing. <laughs> we did get a comment. Uh, don't let Mark sing Christmas carols anymore or I'm not listening to the show ever again. All right, I apologize, guys. You know sometimes I break in the song. If you could see me back here, I'd dance too. Uh, but questions or comments, just call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. And as I mentioned, Jen is womaning the hotline and fending off all the critical comments about my singing. Uh, and she'll get your questions on the air or head over to MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. You can't miss the big orange button in the middle of the screen that says, get your questions on the air. Just click that, type your question in. It'll pop up right in front of Jen. She'll read it on the air for you. But guys, let's get this party started. I wanted to open the show just with a little encouragement because there's so much doom and gloom out there, right? Lawsuits, interest rates, housing prices. And I get it. All of it is a challenge. Housing prices are hard to swallow. Interest rates are hard to swallow. Heck, the monthly expenses of living in this country today are hard to swallow, but so is renting each month. And my only point in that opening diatribe, if you will, was housing expense is not an option. So if you can afford a payment and that payment will buy you a starter home, right? We talked about it last week. Maybe we need to lower our expectations a little bit and get in the game because guys, once you're in the game, things change. And guys, if you're already in the game or if you've won the game, encourage the people around you Give them the advice that maybe could have helped you save some steps along the way. So guys, thank you. Thank you for letting me get that off my chest. I've heard so much negativity this week. I just wanted to pump a little bit of smile and sunshine into the mortgage and real estate world. All right, let's get to your questions. Hey, Jen, can you throw me a question? Christian is asking, my bank said there's a maximum I can spend to buy down my rate because of a fee cap. Why is that a thing? It's my money after all. Why do they care? Hey, Christian, this is a great, great question. And we get this often when we're in a slightly elevated interest rate environment. And you're right. There is a cap on how much you can pay in fees to a lender or a mortgage broker, or in this case, to your bank. So it's super, super interesting. After the housing crash, there were regulations put in place governing how mortgage companies charge their clients and more importantly, how much they can charge their clients. So oftentimes you will, I get this question all the time. How far can I buy my rate down? Well, in theory, you could buy an eight and a half percent rate all the way down to three and a half percent. But the challenge comes in with how much that costs you. The cost to buy the rate down that much is going to exceed the limits that you can pay under the legislation that governs mortgage lending. So it can be super frustrating, but that's oftentimes what happens. You've tripped what's called a QM test. And I'm not going to bore everybody with all of the technical uh, details regarding that. But to answer your question, that is a thing and it is frustrating, but that's the reality of mortgage lending post the apocalyptic crash of the early 2000s. So, and guys, if you can get a seller contribution or a builder contribution to buy the rate down, that changes because now somebody else is paying that fee for you. So sometimes you can get it down there even more. So anyway, great, great question. I know it's frustrating and I know it's confusing, but if you need some help, call me off the air. I'll walk you through it and let you know exactly how far you could buy it down without tripping that QM test. I hope that helps. Hang in there, Christian. <laughs> hey, Jen, throw me another question. Ileana sent this question. As Canadians, we're exploring the idea of owning a vacation home in Florida. What's the customary down payment percentage? Additionally, are there any stipulations that will prevent us listing the place on Airbnb 
while we're back in Canada? Hey, Ileana, that is a great question. And I'm going to do this in the voice of, uh, what was it? Doug McKenzie, Doug and Bob McKenzie. Remember that? <laughs> Man, I'm showing my age at every turn. Uh, it's a boot 20%. I apologize to all my Canadian friends out there. And I do have some Canadian friends, believe it or not. So you can anticipate paying somewhere around 20%, depending on the loan program, your credit score, and your ability to document income. It might be a little bit less. It could be as little as 15%. It might fall into the 25% category. But if you've factored somewhere around 20%, often that's all it's going to take. So I hope that helps. And then the Airbnb thing, that's not a problem for the mortgage. The more specific question would be, make sure it's allowed in the city. I would start there. Or the homeowners association, or if it's a condo, the building because the regulations on Airbnb are changing quickly in a lot of areas and it's starting with city ordinances. And then oftentimes the homeowners association or the condo association, if it's one or the other of those uh, governing bodies could restrict the Airbnb. But as far as owning a vacation home and listing it on Airbnb when you're not there, that's not a problem as far as the mortgage goes. So brilliant question. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, good luck with that. And congratulations guys. And it's really fascinating right now to see what's happening with the Airbnb market in this world, because during the pandemic, everybody wanted to buy an Airbnb. We saw what happened. There was an explosion of interest in Airbnbs and it got out ahead of the local zoning and the local associations. And suddenly there's a party house in the neighborhood or a rental house in the neighborhood. And people were really, really put off by that in some instances. And they went to their, their zoning boards and they asked for a change. And I think some of it in the cities, maybe the hospitality boards and the hotel motel associations really fought back against it because suddenly it was easier and more advantageous. You could get a killer Airbnb for the same price as a hotel. So it's fascinating to see those regulations changing rather quickly. And a lot of people think that's where the inventory necessary to push the property values down is going to come from, like a load of Airbnbs. I don't think there's enough out there that are going to pop in the market to make a difference. It is a curiosity and it's fun to watch from a distance. Not fun if you're the owner of an Airbnb and suddenly the rules have changed. But back to your question, Eliana, as far as the mortgage is concerned, you'll be fine. But check with those local governing boards and check with the associations. Really read through those docs if that's your intent. A boot time, we go into a break. <laughs> Guys, you hear the music, you know what that means. That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this very short break. We'll be back with more of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you know any friends, family, coworkers, or the guy in front of you at the grocery line who's talking or thinking about buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to help me spread the word, introduce them to me, to the team. You can do that by simply sharing MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Guys, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and this is the Mr. Mortgage Show. Guys, if you have questions or comments, just call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. Four six two seven two nine two. That is the anytime hotline, and Jen is womaning that hotline. She'll get your questions on the air. Again, you can call or text that number if you prefer. Just head over to MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Right in the middle of the screen is a big orange button. If you click on that, you can type your questions in right there on the website. Hey, that was. The McKenzie brothers, and if I remember correctly, the movie was called The Great White North. <laughs> hey, here's something, guys. 
who knows the brand of beer that the McKenzie brothers were drinking in that movie? The first person to text the brand of beer, the Doug and Bob McKenzie, I think were their names. I think the movie was called The Great White North. Text that in to 855-462-7292. The first person with the right answer, Jen will text you back and get your t-shirt size and your address, and we will send you out a very, very cool, you'll be the envy of friends, family, and neighbors, a Mr. Mortgage t-shirt. All right, guys, speaking of Jen and your texts, let me throw it her way for another question. Gerald sent us this text. We're thinking about downsizing and are considering a reverse mortgage for our next home. I think you said we can buy a house with a reverse mortgage. Hey, Gerald, you are absolutely correct, my friend. You can buy a home with a reverse mortgage. And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people are familiar with the reverse mortgage as a strategy to pull some equity out of your home and then to live without having to make a monthly mortgage payment. Kudos to you for catching the fact that you can use it to buy a house. Typically, you're gonna put about 50% down. And it works very, very well for somebody who's right sizing and they're selling the big house and sometimes the big house is paid off, but oftentimes the big house is appreciated to a point that there's just a a ton of equity in the house, right? Which is a fantastic situation to be in. But oftentimes people don't want to pull all that equity out and go buy something else with all that equity. They like to keep a little bit of that cash on hand. And you could, in theory, as long as there's enough there, sell the big house, right? The home you raised your family in, take that equity, put half down on a smaller right-sized property in the cool neighborhood with the pickleball and the bus to Whole Foods and all the stuff that you're looking for and not have to make a monthly mortgage payment on the new property and then take the remaining balance of that equity that you cashed out and put it in the bank. So you have some cash on hand and you've got the new property. So yes, you can use a reverse mortgage. It's called reverse to purchase or heck on purchase. If you have any questions, just call us off the air. I'll be happy to walk you through it. If you want a jumping off point, you can go to mrmortgageradio.com and click on that more about reverse button, or just go right to moreaboutreverse.com. We put up a little explainer video and you can request your complimentary booklet and go through just an overview of how the program works and we touch on some common questions and then a few misconceptions about the program but great great question i appreciate that one i hope that helps and if anybody out there is starting to gather info about a reverse mortgage all those resources are available to you at mrmortgageradio.com but thank you for that that was a great question hey jen throw me another vanessa called in my daughter found a great triplex property Two units are vacant, and the current owner lives in one. She wants to know if this is a problem for getting a mortgage. They are fine with putting 20% down if that helps. Hey, this is a great question. Is she still on? No? Okay. I was hoping you were still on the phone because I need need to know just a couple of more pieces of information. If her intention is to buy the property just as a straight rental property, then the vacant units aren't going to be an issue because you're going to use projected rent as the income for the property to qualify with the landlord loan, right? And we can go into details if you want more information about that. But the vacancies are not going to be a problem if you're using that type of loan program. So the other question I had, I was curious about, is her intent to move into it as a primary residence? because that opens up a whole different category of loan programs that are available. And guys, a lot of people are looking to this as an option for a first home, a multi-door property, a duplex, triplex, or fourplex, because with a duplex up to a fourplex, you can buy it as your primary residence if you're going to occupy one of the units. So you can get a preferential interest rate by using a owner-occupied primary residence loan program, and oftentimes you can put less money down. The property still has to cash flow. There's still underwriting guidelines. But my point is, if her intent is to live in it as a primary, then there are different loan programs available. So if you could call or text back with that additional info, 
I'll be happy to answer the question in a little more detail, but the vacancies on the surface, if that was your question, are not an issue because the landlord loan allows you to use the uh, average rents for the area, the projected rents. So I hope that hope that helps uh, answer your question. And if you need more info, just reach out. I'll be happy to walk you through it in detail. But thank you for that one. Hey, Jen, I'm throwing it your way for another question. Jason is asking, we are first time home buyers and are feeling a bit overwhelmed with all of the terminology. Could you explain the basics of PMI and when it's required? Is this the same as title insurance? Hey, Jason, that is a great question. Super confusing, right? There's title insurance, flood insurance, homeowners insurance, (laughs) private mortgage insurance. There's insurance for your insurance, right? You might as well throw life insurance and health insurance in there to car insurance. (laughs) You feel so insured when you buy a property. It's crazy. It's crazy. So to answer your question, title insurance and mortgage insurance are not the same thing. Mortgage insurance is required if you're going to borrow 80% or more of the property value. And it insures the lender on the risk over 80%. So the industry has established that if you have a loan amount of 80% or less, you have a 20% equity position. There's enough equity in the property that if they had to foreclose, they could be made made whole, right? You, you might eat up all your equity with attorney's fees and court costs and back interest, but that 20% is what the industry has established as a risk tolerance. So if you borrow more than 80%, now there's not that 20% cushion, the mortgage insurance insures that difference. So if you put 5% down, you're going to carry a mortgage insurance policy, which only benefits the lender. It doesn't benefit you. It insures the lender on that 15% of additional risk. So I hope that helps. Now, title insurance, very different, but very, very powerful, insures either you or the lender, two separate policies. The, the lender policy insures the lender against any clouds on the title that pop up from the day you close back in time. So if there's an unrecorded deed transfer and Uncle Jed pops up at the courthouse and says, wait a minute, that house is mine, not his. Here's my documentation and it proves to be true. Well, the lenders insured by the title insurance policy to cover their loss because they're going to eat whatever's outstanding on the mortgage amount. Now, when you close, you can also buy it's called a simultaneous issue. You get a policy that protects you from the same thing. So title insurance protects the lender and or you, depending on whether you get that simultaneous issue or not, from previous clouds on the title that pop up after you own it. So I hope that helps. Mortgage insurance protects the lender against that additional risk and title insurance protects the lender. And then you, if you choose to buy it from claims against the ownership or liens on the property that pop up that the title company missed when they were prepping the title for transfer. Woo, say that three times fast. Hey guys, you hear the music? You know what that means? That's my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this very short break. We'll be back with more of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and this is the Mr. Mortgage Show. Guys, I am having a blast with you today. You've fired off some great questions. You let me sing some Christmas carols. Jen's uh, thrown an empty coffee cup at the glass to get me to stop singing. Man, we've had a lot of fun. Guys, if you have questions or comments, just call or text 855-462-7292. That's 
462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. And fun fact, that rings in the studio when we're on the air. But if you need us when we're not on the air, that number will forward to the bat line right in my office. So we will help you if we can. 855-462-7292 is the Anytime Hotline. Or... Head over to MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Right in the middle of the page is a big orange button that says, get your questions on the air. Just click that button, start typing away, and your question will pop up on our end. Jen will read it on the air for you. But speaking of questions, Jen, and getting them on the air, let's throw it her way. Go ahead, Jen. Rebecca sent this question. We have a significant credit card debt and are considering a debt consolidation loan. If we roll everything together into a REC refinance, will we have to close out the credit cards? Hey, that was Rebecca. Okay, great, great question. We get this one all the time. And the answer is no. In most cases, you can pay the credit cards off at closing, but still keep them open. So... Be careful, put them in the freezer, stick them under the bed because you don't want to have a repeat performance where you run the cards up again. No judgment, no judgment. A lot of people get into a circumstance where credit cards are their only option. I told a story on the air about a fantastic couple that during the pandemic had lost jobs and insurance and had to use credit cards for medical expenses for their kids. Thank God they had enough equity that when things stabilized, they were able to do a debt consolidation refi, pay off all those credit cards and bring their bills way, way down. And in that instance, they kept the cards open too because they wanted that just in case emergency break glass. So to answer your question, you can use the REC refi. And guys, if you're out there hearing this for the first time, REC stands for reduce eliminate and consolidate. It's the refi program that we designed to allow you to consolidate debt and lower your monthly payments. Yes, in this environment that we're in today, your mortgage interest rate is likely to go up. But in a lot of cases, even in this heightened interest rate environment, your monthly expenses are still dropping significantly. And if you wanna play with the calculator to see for yourself if this makes sense, Go to R-E-C-R-E-F-I.com. That's R-E-C for rec, R-E-C-R-E-F-I.com, recrefi.com. But yes, to answer your question, you can leave the credit cards open. In most instances, with the rec refi, we would pay those off at closing for you. But brilliant question. I appreciate that one. Hey, Jen, toss me another question. Tiffany asks this. We are looking into buying a condo as a rental property. Are the mortgage requirements different for condos compared to single family homes? Hey, this is a great, great question. So the answer is yes and no. It depends on the condo. So you're going to hear two words in the world of condo financing, warrantable versus non-warrantable. And a warrantable condo has a wider variety of mortgage programs available to it. And warrantable simply means that there's ample reserves in the budget, that there are enough funds available for the repairs. There's not big assessments coming. It's a well-managed association from a financial standpoint. Non-warrantable, the association didn't pass that test and a non-warrantable condo is going to require a larger down payment and you can anticipate a higher interest rate. So if you want me to check on your specific condo building or condo association to see if it's warrantable or non-warrantable, if it's in the database, I'll be able to know. So just call me when we're not on the air and I could run that search for you. But brilliant question. I know it's not clear because it's specific to the association, but I hope that helps. Hey, Jen, do you have another question? Okay, go ahead. Aaron emailed this one. Is there a first time buyer grant that helps with the down payment and closing costs? Yes, sir. Great question, Aaron. Great question, Aaron. Sorry, Jen. Yes, Aaron, there are a variety of grant programs that are available. Some act as a second mortgage, some are a bona fide grant, some are specific to a county. 
There's a ton of them available. If you want to have a deeper discussion, I need to know where you're located. You can just call back or text us back that info and I'll steer you in the direction to start that process with finding out what grants are available specifically to you. But great, great question. Hey, Jen, let's keep them rolling. Michael is asking, we're nearing retirement and considering a reverse mortgage. How does my age impact the terms of a reverse mortgage? I'm told the older we are, the more money we can get. Is this true? Hey, Michael, this is a great, great question. So yes, it is true. Now, there are three things that determine how much of your equity you can access. Well, four, because one is the amount of equity that you have to begin with, right? So you do need to have some equity in the property. But the interest rate of the day, your age and the value of the property are going to determine how much equity that you have available to access with the reverse mortgage. The older you are, you have less time with us, right? Because of the mortality tables that are used when they're doing the underwriting. The older you are, the more of that equity is available because the projected length of time that you're going to have that loan is projected to be less. So somebody who's 70 versus somebody who's 90 is going to have access to less of their equity. So the older you are, you are going to be able to access more of the equity. The lower the interest rate, the more equity you can access because, because the balance is going to grow slower if an interest rate was four versus eight. So they do all of the calculations based on the day of closing and the forecasted growth of the loan balance, your projected lifespan, and then it all starts with the current value of the property. So I hope that helps. That was a great, great question. If you need more info, check out that more about reverse link. That's at mrmortgageradio.com. But thank you for that. And if you need more info, just call or text me. Anybody out there, I love talking about the reverse mortgage product. I'm happy to jump on the phone and talk with anybody about it. Great question. Hey, Jen, can we squeeze in another? Sandy is asking, is there a maximum limit on a VA mortgage? We are looking in the $2 million range. Go, Sandy. Hey, Sandy, that is a great question. And Technically, no, there is not a max on the VA loan program. A lot of lenders will cut it off at a million dollars. We'll go to three, and there are some lenders out there that will go to five million. So to answer your question, you are good to go in the $2 million range. But great, great question. Hey, Jen, do you have time for another? Daryl sent this. I've heard you talking about a for sale by owner program. Is that still available? We are finishing up our renovations and will be ready to sell soon. Hey, Daryl, that's a great question. Yes, that program is up, running, and in full swing. And I need to talk more about it. I'm so, so excited about that. It's at Fizbozilla. That's the book in the program, F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A.com. And Fizbo is a for sale by owner, F-S-B-O. The slang term is Fizbo. So F-S-B-O. Z-I-L-L-A.com. Completely free. Download the book. It'll help you every step of the way. If you have questions, just reach out. Give me a shout. I'll help you if I can. But you can get started at F-S-B-O-Z-I-L-L-A.com. I love that. Guys, we wrote the book, came up with what I think is a pretty creative name. So we're having a lot of fun with Fizbozilla.com. So anyway, I appreciate that question. Hey, guys, you hear the music? You know what that means? We have wrapped up another week of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Man, where does time go? Hey, if you need us during the week, just head over to Mr. Mortgage Radio.com. That's Mr. Mortgage Radio.com. You'll be able to connect with us there. All my contact info is on that page, mrmortgageradio.com. Otherwise, guys, have an amazing week. Jen and I will be back next week right here, same time, same station. Have a great week. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling 
edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show.